Good day, my name is Scott Kinney with Discovery Education and this is our One Idea series. Today I'm joined by Dr. Stephen Gerhardt. Uh, Dr. Gerhardt is Superintendent of Governor Mifflin School District here in the great state of Pennsylvania. Uh, has uh, a long history in education, has been a high school principal, uh, served as an assistant superintendent in, in local districts as well. Uh, also has some private sector experience, so has worked for a great company as an educational consultant uh, in his time at Discovery Education as well. So, uh, Dr. Gerhardt, great to have you with us today. Uh, thanks, Scott. Thanks to be with. Uh, good to be with you. So, um, you, one of the things I noticed, uh, Steve, when I when, when I went to your website and, and kind of looked at your Governor Mifflin page, uh, you have a site on there for um, the superintendent, and one of the things that's highlighted right in the middle is your entry plan. And and I wanted to ask you because you've only been at Governor Mifflin about six months, uh, right. and we know that across this country we have superintendents that go into districts fairly often. Um, why was that so important to kind of put up front as one of your key initiatives? Well, I think uh, reading any of the literature of coming in as a new superintendent or a new leader anywhere, you'll find literature that speaks to recommendations around an entry plan. And uh, so I felt it was important coming in. While I live in this community, um, I felt that it was still important to uh, learn what was on the minds of all our various stakeholders. So, you know, I went in saying, okay, I need to develop an entry plan and, and uh, you know, was the mindset of hitting the ground learning. And so, uh, so I put together a, I guess, a pretty formal entry plan, spent some time talking with other superintendents and uh, generating what do I feel are some important questions to ask. Right. And, and, yeah. I was, the, the, the shared vision piece, you and I have talked in the past about that importance of shared vision um, and, and kind of the key stakeholders. So who are some of those people that, that you reached out to and, and what was that process kind of looked and, and feel like from a shared vision perspective? Sure. So, so I'm still in the midst of it because uh, it was interesting. I thought, you know, I had the thinking of an entry plan, uh, 90 days, 100 days, first six months or whatever. But quickly i realized going into this entry plan that i really in a way needed to slow down to make sure i was getting as much feedback as possible so so i've been with our board i've been with our administrators i've been with our professional staff um, with our parents our support staff our larger community and then even our students so there's those are some of the the larger stakeholder groups um, that I've, I've been spending some time, you know, gathering feedback and gathering information from. And because coming in, uh, when I first started as superintendent, I would have people say, well, we can't wait to hear what your vision is. You know, what is your vision? And, and that's, that's pressure, right? You're, you come <laughs> in and, you know, the first month, you don't know anything about the district. And, and right away in the first month, they're saying, what's your vision? And, and, and so I took a step back. I'm like, well, it's not about what my vision is. Uh, while I do have one, it's what our shared vision is. What do we need to go as a whole community? And so, you know, so my learning through this entry plan is how the feedback from this entry plan is actually working to develop this shared vision. So I'm, I'm curious, because specifically because you mentioned students uh, at the tail end of kind of those stakeholder groups, how consistent has the feedback been across the different groups? Well, the students have not come out yet. Like what I said, my and my ambition was that I would have all of these groups done, right? So, uh, so the student piece is is next, um, but the professional staff, the administrators, the parents, and even the support staff are pretty much in line, saying saying a lot of the same things, and um, and some of those things are around twenty first century, some of those things are around technology, college and career readiness. Um, so that's so now it'd be interesting to see, you know, where where the students match up to how the adults feel we're doing and what we need to do and what the, the what the students say. So uh, that's going to be to me probably one of the more powerful pieces of data to come out. Yeah, that'll be fascinating. So Yeah. Right. Now, now, one of the you know, when I started my career in education about 20 some years ago in the early 90s in a small district in Pennsylvania, you know, the, the way we gathered feedback from our, our constituents and our key stakeholders was through things like board meetings and, you know, every couple months maybe we'd go to the VFW or the Kiwanis and, and meet with folks. Right. Um, how has that changed as far as collecting data and, and the way that you can utilize tools and technology to kind of reach different opinions? Right. Well, the face-to-face -face is still important, right? That, that uh, we should be reminded that technology is a great tool to use, but there's still 
a great value in going to borough council meetings or, you know, meeting with support staff or, you know, being out in the community at games and different things like that. But technology wise, you know, whether you use Google Forms or whether you use SurveyMonkey or whatever, there's, there's just a number of technology tools out there that you can do a real long survey if you want. Um, but we also know sometimes how, uh, I think we're all there, if I pull up a survey and it's gonna take me a long time, maybe I'm not gonna spend so much time with it, right? right. So, but if I, can, if I can put something together on a Google form, just a couple questions, throw it out there, and you'd be surprised how within that day, you're getting feedback. Uh, and so that's what I noticed that when I put entry plan uh, surveys out, uh, and I use Google Forms in this case, uh, within a day, I'm, I'm starting to see the feedback rolling in. Right. Uh, and, and so that's, that's, to me, that was powerful to see right away, the very first day that I put something out there, that I could have 100 people tell me what was on their mind around those questions. Yeah. You know, so where, you know, where else, you know, in one day to get a hundred people to give me feedback on a question. We all feel like that, that we get that kind of feedback from a hundred people every day. But that's a real, that's a great example. That's a positive example. Right. Right. So uh, talk about, speaking about that feedback, is that a two way street? I mean, how do you think about closing that community, uh, closing might be the wrong word, but that circle of communication with your, your constituents? Right. So what's important is, now as I'm gathering this feedback, I need to report this back out. And I have a, a state of the district uh, address coming mm. up next week. And that's going to be my first op opportunity as a community event to share out with our community what different people are saying. Um, and, and then also start using that feedback that I've been getting to paint that, that future going forward and developing that shared vision with the community. Um, I think it's also important that there are some written communications that, that I put out. Uh, so as you see on my website, there might be just the, the construct of a basic entry plan, but now what needs to follow is what is the feedback from that entry plan? So the stakeholders know, you know, if the individual in the stakeholder said, well, I said this, but did the rest of the people in my stakeholder group say the same thing? And so many times they are saying the same things and, and uh, you know, that collective feedback being reported back helps develop the, some of that shared vision and then that commitment for why we need to do what we need to do going forward. So one last question, is there something that has surprised you through this process that, that really was uh, an eye opener or something that you didn't expect to hear but you heard, I'm just curious. Um, making sure that people feel included and that they have a voice. Um, people do want to be part of, of the vision. They want to be part of you know, solutions. And I think sometimes as, as leaders, we think that we have to, again, go forth and say, this is my vision as the leader and, and thou shalt follow. Um, versus recognizing that, you know, there, there, is, there are community stakeholders that want to be involved in the conversation. And, but they, they don't maybe always want to come to meetings all the time, right. but even just participating in a feedback loop or, uh, reading a little bit about it on the website, they feel included. And so when they're at the grocery store or where they're at church or whatever, they can, they can be part of the conversation. The conversation can happen out in the community and doesn't always have to happen in a formal school event. So it was, it was reassuring if you wet, if you will, but, uh, maybe a little bit surprising to see, you know, people say, Oh, communities are disengaged. They're too busy. They're not interested. Sure. And that's not true. Yeah, you know, they, and you they do hear do that. I mean, yep, right. you hear that. So yeah. this is uh, Dr. Stephen Gerhardt, uh, Superintendent of Governor Mifflin School District in Pennsylvania. Uh, Dr. Gerhardt, thanks so much for uh, chatting with us today and, and sharing uh, a little bit about your entry plan. All right. Thanks, Scott. Take care. Have a great day. All right. You too.